gathered friends, listen again to our legend of the Bionicle. Years ago, the great spirit Matanui won his final battle against the master of shadows Makuta Teradax. After that, he sacrificed most of his power in order to give his people a new planet where to live, the reformed Spheros Magna. A new era of great peace was about to begin, with the Matoran, the Toa, the Agori and the Glatoria being guided by the Order of Matanui, led by Toa Helrix and her agents, under the mysterious eye of the Mask of Life. But new and old enemies are ready to menace this newborn order, making the figure of the hero fall into dust. This is Bionicle Book 10 Salvation. Episode 1 Amnesia Spherus Magna changed a lot since the final act of the Great Spirit. From the above, you could still see some of the deserts in the Easter Belt, where the Matora and the remaining Toa belonging to the villages of Toka and Wenui resided. In the past, they often had to face the silly with threats from the Bone Hunters and Skrull led by Tuma. Over the years, the two Turaga, Wenua and Donewa became more connected with the Agori from Volcanus. Some of them, in fact, settled inside the Crypt Canyon, where they lived with the Matoran, separated by a huge wall called Scar Wall. This huge barrier was often a place of exchange of goods. Unfortunately, when the unity war between Agori and Matoran broke out, the Scar Wall was used exclusively for specific reasons and movements on the Matoran region to the Ogori one. In the southwest area, the seas once coming from Aqua Magna bathed the beaches of Volcanus and Tajun. In the past, Bakama and Nokama decided to avoid particular cohabitations because of the conflicts between Matoran and Ogori. Bakama therefore decided to start the construction of Ahinui near Volcanus. He also planned a road that would have connected his village to Wainui in the south of Tajun. Later, this land would have connected the remaining Matoran villages, forming the circle of Wainui. Finally, there were the villages of Econox and Tazara to the north and northwest. Sports events often took place in the Tazara arena, where both species of biomechanics competed. In the northeast, there was Roxas, the evil force of Bone Hunters, Skrull, Skakti, and even Dark Hunters still resided there. When the Destiny War ended, these factions were given the opportunity to stay and adapt to the rules of the new villages, otherwise they would have been abandoned in the desert. The Hero Factor instead had some checkpoints in different parts of the planet. In fact, they established a headquarters near the Skrull River, and it was capable of becoming completely invisible for security reasons. The various supplies, including soldiers, landed in the checkpoints. Finally, the carcass of a huge robot extended all over the jungles of the Zara. Years ago, as we all know, an unparalleled clash took place and the Master of Shadows had been defeated by the Great Spirit. Could that be the real reason why Makuro decided to continue his research on that planet? In the years to come, the Toanuva, Tahu, Gali, Kopaka, Luwa, Onwa, and Pohatu continued to teach the messages and virtues handed down by the Great Spirit, together with the Turaga. At the beginning, there were several years of peace and discreet coexistence with the Agori. Tahu was appointed by Dume as Toanifier of all villages. Along with the other Toa, he could attend the assemblies between Dume, Helrix, and the Six Turaga. 
The meetings normally included public administration or sporting events. As for the Ordo of Matinui, a base was established in the desert south of Creek Canyon. A few months before the Second Corps War, taking advantage of the strategic position, Helrich decided to establish direct contact with the Wa Nui Circle. It was the best way to stay in touch with all six regions and to make the order ready to interfere for any threat that was difficult to face. Before New Daxia was founded, the old base had been destroyed. The new location was also geographically and environmentally better. In the seas that baited the other lands, the Matoran of the destroyed Mari Nui settled. Many underwater cities were built. To direct the intense activities, there were Idris, Defilak, and Didraxon. Even in these waters, the Hira factory set up a checkpoint. The Toa Nuva named the Toamari Jaller, Hali, Nuparu, Kongu, and Huki as their second in command during the Destiny War. Over the centuries, the continuous attack by Tuma induced the Toa to train the Matora militarily. Several quantities of protodermis were used in the construction of weapons, vehicles, and strategic bases. This decision, however, began to worry the Agori. Each Tuamari would have become chief of an army and he also had to appoint a second in command. The same didn't happen, of course, on Intio Nui, where a statue was erected in honor of Matoro. The generals of the Matoran armies, at the suggestion of the Turaga, were the Matoran of Metro Nui, Nuri, Vizula, Orkam, Eri, and Tehuti, with the exception of Akmu, who mysteriously disappeared after the fall of Makuta. To face these gaps, the Toa who fought in the skies of Kardanui proposed Tanma, Solak, and Fodok. Helrix also decided to send Topdog as an extra help. And so, the Three Virtus Army was born. Inside an ancient temple in the desolate lands of Roxas, the Turaga of Matanui have been awakened. Okama, Nokama, Matau, Nuju, Onua, and Winwa were reborn in the form of Toa. Among those who welcomed the news with marked euphoria, like Matau, those with a certain amazement, and those like Okama, with a strong state of disquiet. The sage Duraga and leader of the former village of Takoro, as well as of Town Metru, found himself after thousands of years inside the Toa armor. Nukama was present as usual, ready to comfort the Toa fire like in the past. There must have been a valid reason. But why them? How was it possible that Turaga could become Toa again, and above all, who was the one who had been able to achieve all this? The six Toa found a sort of familiarity with the place where they were. It reminded them the Toa Suva of Matronui, where thousands of years ago they became Toa against every expectation. Some thought it was a coincidence, but Bakama instead was somehow convinced that he was in a dream or some kind of vision. He paid attention on a particular mark on his brother's shoulder and then realized that he had the one too. It consisted of a sort of inverted clover with an orange shadow around it. After accurate hypothesis, the Thor decided to divide into three groups to seek the truth and the responsible behind it. Kama went with Nuju, Nokama with Matau, and Donawa with Wenwa. Once they left the temple, they took three different paths in the same directions indicated by the mark. Their new and perhaps final journey begins now.